Okay, so if you cannot answer this question, well, you're going to have a tough time uh, solving basic algebraic equations. But uh, don't get discouraged because this is not that difficult. But uh, this problem right here really represents a very important uh, concept in mathematics. So let's go to take a look at the question. The question is the following. What times 2g is equal to 1? Another way to kind of look at this problem is the product of 2g and something else is equal to 1. We're looking for what this is equal to. All right, so uh, again, this is a very, very important concept. Not a difficult concept, but one that you need to master in order to uh, solve a lot of problems in math, especially basic algebra equations. All right, so if you know the answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, we'll review what this uh, property is and exactly how to solve this question. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning mathematics, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so something times 2g is equal to 1. What is this something? Well, the correct answer is the following, 1 over 2g. Okay, so how did you do? Well, if you got this right, let's celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100%, if I can write out 100%, because obviously you know a thing or two about something called the multiplicative inverse. All right, so that's what we're talking about here. So even if you got this right, a lot of you uh, may not have uh, remembered, oh yes, I am uh, finding the multiplicative inverse, and that's okay. You do learn a lot of things in math, uh, where there's properties, you don't remember what the name of the property is, but uh, of course you understand what that property in fact is uh, saying in a mathematics. And properties in math are effectively uh, laws that we follow, so, okay, or laws that we follow. And there's properties of numbers, and there's properties of algebra, and then there's properties in geometry. But the one that we're, uh, we're concerned with in this particular problem is something called the multiplicative inverse. And uh, this is... Um, a concept that applies to not only just uh, variable terms like what we're dealing with right here, but numbers as well. So let's go and get into this right now, and let's define the multiplicative inverse. Okay, so first of all, uh, let's uh, take a number, and we're dealing with a non-zero number. Okay, so uh, the only thing that doesn't really apply here is the number zero. That's not going to have a multiplicative inverse. So we can take a number or a variable like a. So let's look at that uh, um, number or variable as a fraction. So, for example, if I had the, um, the number 5 and I wanted to kind of think of this as a fraction, you might be saying, hey, Mr. U2 Math Man, uh, that's not a fraction. Well, we could always think of a number or a variable as a fraction by just putting it over 1. So here we have a numerator of 5 and a denominator of 1. Now, if we have the variable a, we can think of that as a fraction by just um, having a over 1. And that's important because uh, when we have a variable or a number, we can find something called its uh, multiplicative inverse, and that is effectively the reciprocal. Okay, And the reciprocal is where we just flip a fraction upside down. So for uh, this example, a is the same thing as a over 1. So its reciprocal is where we're going to uh, basically flip-flop the numerator and denominator. So the 1 is going to become the numerator, and the a is going to become the denominator. So 1 over a is the reciprocal. Now, why is that important? Well, the reciprocal is the same thing as a multiplicative um, inverse, and that means that when we multiply these two things together, a times 1 over a, the answer or the product is equal to 1. Okay, so again, a is the same thing as a over 1. And when you multiply fractions, again, we multiply the respective numerators and denominators. So a times 1 is a. 1 times a is a. a divided by a is 1. Okay, so again, this also works with numbers as well. And this is what uh, we want to be thinking about. So anytime we want to find out what we need to multiply to get um, an answer of 1. Okay, so in other words, if we have a number, we're like, boy, this times what 
is going to get us one, well, it's always the multiplicative inverse. So let's go ahead and take a look at a couple basic examples using numbers uh, before we actually answer the question. So here we have three, for example, or three over one. So what is its uh, multiplicative inverse? What well, would be the reciprocal of three? So we're gonna flip flop that three. Uh, so that would be one over three or one third. So three times one third, hopefully you're up to speed on your fractions. That'd be three over three or one. So the product is one. Okay, so how about uh, if our number is one half? Well, it's a reciprocal, okay, which IE is the same thing as a multiplicative inverse, is we're just going to flip it, right? So this is one over two. So we're just gonna put the two up here, two over one or two. So one half times two is one. Okay, so uh, it seems like a pretty obvious basic math concept, but uh, you know, you really have to, you know, understand uh, these properties and uh, you know laws of math very very well, especially when it comes to learning how to solve algebraic equations. Now it might seem kind of obvious. You're like, yes, Mr. You too, math man. Uh, you know this is uh, very easy stuff. And how is it that we're going to use this? You know, in algebra. Well, you, we use this multiplicative inverse all the time when we are solving all sorts of equations. But uh, let's go ahead and take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel before I show you exactly how to find uh, the multiplicative inverse of 2G. A lot of you are probably already saying, yes, I already know what you're going to do. But uh, anyways, uh, I just want to uh, mention that I'm making this video at the beginning of 2024. So happy new year to all of you out there. Hope you had a great 2023, happy holiday season. And of course, we're all off to a new year. So what does this await us? Well, it's a big mystery, right? Just like this multiplicative inverse, a big question mark. But here is one thing. Um, I'm gonna tell you right now that I am going to try to post a thousand new videos in 2024. So in 2023, I posted about 700, I think around 730 math videos. That's a lot of math content. And I spread this out from basic math to advanced math, my calculus and everything in between. But I'm really gonna try to come up with more creative problems. I do a lot of word problems. People seem to enjoy that. So that is awesome. So I wanna to try to create all sorts of different uh, word problems. But really, my goal is to reach as many people as I possibly can and try to make math interesting, okay? Now, I, I was going to say the word fun. A lot of you are saying, ah, I don't really have a lot of fun doing math. Some of you actually like math and have fun doing math. That's fantastic as well. But if you have to learn math, okay, uh, or have to learn any subject, if it's not interesting, it's just like, you know, it's very difficult. And that's the problem. Oftentimes, for, uh, people struggle in math because they're just bored with the subject. So I'm going to try, try to make it more uh, interesting. But to, anyways, I need your support to continue to uh, grow my channel and reach as many people as possible. So make sure to subscribe. And if you're gonna do that, hit that notification uh, bell as well. And again, happy new year. All right, so let's go ahead and continue on with this problem. Now that we understand the multiplicative inverse, right? So let me kind of erase all this right here. So the question is, okay, 2G times what is equal to one? Well, uh, this implies uh, that we are talking about the multiplicative inverse. So what is the multiplicative inverse of 2G? Well, we have to find the reciprocal of 2G. So we need to think of 2G as a fraction. So we'll put that over one. So the reciprocal is, we're gonna put the one as uh, the numerator and the 2G as the denominator. So one over 2G is the multiplicative uh, uh, reciprocal. Now, of course, we can always check this, right? So one over two G, okay, that's what we're looking for, times two G. So again, you have to know how to multiply fractions. So one over two G is two G over two G times one, which of course is two G, and anything divided by itself is one. So two, uh, these two, uh, twos cross cancel, these Gs cross cancel. Of course, we always are left with a one, so the answer is one. Okay, now, why is this important? Let's take a quick look at this. So if you're trying to, um, let's say, solve an algebraic equation like this, 2G is equal to 7, okay? Now here, most of you uh, might be saying, yes, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I know how to solve this. All I'm going to do is divide both sides of the equation by 2, and you would absolutely be correct. But really what we're doing is we are multiplying by the multiplicative uh, um, 
at the multiplicative inverse of 2. Okay, not 2g, but we're multiplying by 1 half. Okay, so we have 2 or 2 over 1 because we're looking to figure out what times this is going to give us a 1 because we want a 1g. So it's always the reciprocal. It's going to be the multiplicative inverse. So, of course, this is going to be 7 over 2 is our answer. So uh, here, this is multiplication. We do the, um, when we're dividing both sides of the equation here, in other words, 2 times g is multiplication. So when we divide both sides of the equation by 2, we're doing the opposite operation, which is division. So things like um, the multiplicative inverse, and there's other uh, properties that you certainly need to understand. And again, it's okay if you forget the names of these uh, properties. I, mean, I would encourage you to remember uh, what the names are, but if you forgot, that's okay. You just have to understand what the properties are because this is going to continue to follow you um, as you um, kind of progress into more advanced mathematics. But uh, hopefully this little video helped you out. And if that is the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you need help with algebra or any you know, level of math, basic math, algebra, advanced math, check out all my main courses. I always leave links to those in the description. And you'll find uh, my math foundations course, with this, which is my most basic uh, arithmetic, basic math, quick review course. Then I have uh, Math Skills Rebuilder in there, which is just a, it's a course for people that are not students who just want to learn math from basic math, algebra, geometry, some trigonometry. So that's that course. But then I have these other courses in there, like pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, uh, pre-calculus. You can kind of determine uh, what course that you need. And if you need a specific or a special math course, well, then go to tcmathacademy.com because I have a library of like 150 plus uh, specialized courses, especially in the area of test preparation. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.